today on Missing Number, does Luigi's Mansion actually depict Luigi hanging himself? Did Twisted Metal predict 9-11? And the story behind the notoriously bad Xbox Live indie game, Maids with Balloons. This is terrible. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh. Missing Number starts now. Luigi's Mansion is one of the darker games in the Mario franchise, and one dark discovery in the game left players shocked at what they were seeing. At one point in the game, there's a blackout, but despite this, you can hear a telephone mysteriously ringing in one of the attic rooms. When players decided to enter the room and pick up the phone, this is what they saw. Hello? Luigi's shadow looked like it was hanging from a noose. This elicited shock and disbelief among the fandom. Oh my god. What, what the f**k? Oh, oh my god. Mom! You can turn the lights back on. Uh, no. Yo, did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? That's the shadow of Luigi hanging himself, y'all. Hello? Watch. Look! He's hanging! That's Luigi hanging up there! Okay, now, did you see that? I believe in the Alpha 2 version that was actually a poster of Luigi being hung by a noose. And it said, if you do not get out, this is what will happen. Did Nintendo really include a suicidal Luigi in an E-rated game? When looking at the shadow more closely, it's not connected to Luigi's body, and it's suspended in the air. It's also in a different pose than Luigi's model, as the shadow's arm is pointed downward, which is what you'd expect from a hanging body. Not only that, but you can also see what looks like rope wrapped around Luigi's neck. Many players said that this is the only room where they saw this kind of shadow. It's also not too inconceivable that a shadow of a hanging corpse would be in a game about the dead. Additionally, since this is not an actual corpse, just the shadow of one, it wouldn't be considered too graphic and could have gotten a pass by Nintendo when the game came out in 2001, back when standards may have been different. Nintendo may be a company that has a squeaky clean image, but it doesn't mean that they haven't made some relatively graphic stuff. Another family-friendly company that's just like Nintendo is Disney, but even Disney's Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World has a hanging body that can be seen to this day. Some believe that this shadow indicated that Luigi was dead all along. Luigi hung himself after failing to save Mario, and so the mansion was actually purgatory. Meanwhile, others believe that the shadow was actually a ghost, or an illusion created by a ghost. Then there were those that speculated that the shadow was leftover content from the game's beta which some believed was darker, since pre-release footage and trailers of the game showed a depressed Luigi. It was also theorized that a rogue Nintendo employee created the shadow, or that Nintendo wanted to create media buzz around it to get older kids to buy the game. Of course, another explanation is that the hanging shadow was just a lighting glitch, Normally, the camera is in a fixed position, but when Luigi answers the phone in the attic room, the camera zooms in to a lower position. Since the light source is said to be tied to the camera, the camera's lower angle causes the light to cast a shadow at a higher level. In 2018, a YouTuber named Slippy Slides was able to prove the lighting glitch theory by removing the game's text box and moving the camera to the right. This caused Luigi's shadow to move to the left, 
and revealed that Luigi was not being hung. The shadow was just reflecting what Luigi was doing. So I decided to remove the text box and move the camera slightly to the right, meaning the shadow appears on the wall in front of Luigi. When I do, the result can be seen, and it's clearly just the shadow of Luigi on the phone. Furthermore, what was thought to be Luigi's arm was ostensibly just part of the ghost-sucking vacuum on Luigi's back. Additionally, floating shadows can also be seen elsewhere in the game, and in the 3DS remake of Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's shadow doesn't float and actually stretches across the floor. As a matter of fact, the shadow is almost comically small, as if Nintendo was overcorrecting. If you like this video so far, be sure to subscribe, like, and click the bell icon for notifications. If you have any gaming myths, mysteries, oddities, or easter eggs, be sure to let me know. Now back to the show. Conspiracy theorists point to a variety of things that, in their eyes, foreshadow 9-11, from commercials to dollar bills, to even Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal Black, which was a vehicle combat game, was released in June 2001, three months before the September 11th terrorist attacks. In Black's very first level, which takes place in a junkyard, there is an airplane that can be shot down with missiles. After being shot, it will crash into a building, opening up an area where you can unlock a secret vehicle called Yellow Jacket. In real life, not only did planes crash into the World Trade Center, but the US military was ordered to shoot down any hijacked airplanes that day. When the European version of Black was released in December 2001, just three months after 9-11, the airplane in the junkyard level was removed, and the secret area was made accessible to all players, without having to shoot down an aircraft. The North American version was left untouched, and it included even more signs about 9-11, literally. In another level of the game, there's a cafe billboard that displays a cup of coffee with steam rising from it. The steam, however, is in the shape of 9-11, or 9-11, Then right behind the billboard is a sign that features the all-seeing eye, which is a symbol synonymous with conspiracy theories. Text on the billboard happens to say, he is watching. Additionally, in the same level there is a wrecked plane that's part of the map's terrain. Not only that, but in Twisted Metal 2, which is a 1996 game that takes place in 2006, there is a New York City level where you can see the Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, and Chrysler Building in the background. However, the World Trade Center is nowhere to be seen. Conspiracy theorists take this as evidence that Twisted Metal 2 predicted that the Twin Towers would be destroyed in the future. However, some say that the level actually takes place on top of the Twin Towers, but this seems to be unconfirmed. If that wasn't enough, there's this Twisted Metal comic that shows the Twin Towers collapsing. Then there's this concept art for a cancelled Twisted Metal game that allowed you to destroy things like the Twin Towers. And then here are photos of Twisted Metal's creator David Jaffe standing in front of the Twin Towers during a press tour for Black. What's more, a pre-release build of a game called Twisted Metal Small Brawl contained an unused 9-11 memorial picture in the game's files. All of this is enough to convince conspiracy theorists that Jaffe and the Twisted Metal team knew that 9-11 was going to happen. In response, Jaffe said in 2018 that this thing is so so stupid, before adding a smiley face. Then in a live stream on June 21st, 2024, Jaffe asserted that he didn't know that 9-11 was going to occur, and pointed out how absurd it would be to hide something like that in a video game. 
And at first you kind of blow it off because I'm like, okay, well, let's be clear. I can promise you, I didn't know about 9-11 and no one else on the team, if they did, I mean, why would we hide it in a video game? And then the 9-11 thing here, it's like, I mean, you know, I don't think the guy who made that art actually is going, I made 911. Or maybe they did, but 911 before 911 was 911, which meant emergency. Um, right? So maybe that's just what it was talking about. Um, Jaffe also surmises that the reason for all the Twisted Metal Twin Tower references may be due to how the Twisted Metal games involves you destroying landmarks, and so it would be natural to include a landmark like the World Trade Center. However, with that said, Jaffe did admit in a tweet on May 29th, 2024, that the more he sees the 9-11 references, the more it does strike me as weird as fuck, and that, no doubt, it is odd. He mused in the aforementioned livestream that maybe he was under some kind of Mercurian candidate spell, where he doesn't know that he knows something. But the more I see all these things, I just, I don't know if there's like, you know, a, uh, uh, a Manchurian effect thing where like you can you can actually know something but you don't know that you know it you know what I'm saying and maybe I was trying to warn people I don't believe that but it's just it is a little weird right or am I just reaching Jaffe may have been serious since he has a live stream series where he discusses things like the paranormal UFOs weird science and conspiracy theories what's more here's a clip of Jaffe in 2020 talking about real life plane crashes. So I started looking this up and there was a fucking passenger plane that collided with the Cessna and the Cessna crashed out in some field somewhere, but the fucking passenger plane crashed into a town in San Diego called North Park, killed a bunch of people. And from there, I just started. On July 29th, the Xbox 360 store shut down after 19 years. Purple hat, it just happened. The store just shut down. Well, you guys, today is the day, July 29th, 2024. The Xbox 360 store is officially gone. The marketplace was filled with gaming gems, but if you dug deep enough, you could uncover lots of junk in the Xbox Live indie game section. Here, eminently low budget indie games were sold, and unlike Xbox Live Arcade, Xbox Live indie games were self-policed by the game development community, not by Microsoft. As such, basically anything and everything was allowed for sale, and while there were a few decent games, more often than not, there was just utter trash. One of those games was the notorious Maids with Balloons. Released in 2010 for $1, Maids with Balloons was about how three maids want to go to the beach, but can't, since they're afraid that birds will poop on them. So to solve this problem, they come up with an ingenious plan that involves getting balloons to scare the birds away. This is explained in the form of a professionally done full motion video, or FMV. Yay, we're almost done! What do you guys want to do tonight? We could go to my house and watch cartoons. We watch cartoons at your house every night. Well, why don't we go to the beach? Oh, we can't go to the beach. There's birds there and they'll poop on us. Mm. I think I have an idea. An idea? Yeah. Let me draw it up. Okay, so Kelly, according to my calculations, if we find balloons and then let them go at the We can hit the seagulls and they won't poop on us. We'll scare them away with the balloons. Hmm, that's a really good idea. And I think I saw balloons on the roof of the circus. So you can get those. Woohoo! And on the freeway, can you get those? Yeah! Let's do it then. I will meet you girls at the beach and you'll bring the balloons. Yeah! Woo! Yay! The game consists of three mini-games in which you control Photoshop sprites of the maids. In one mini-game, you have to get balloons on the freeway while avoiding oncoming traffic a la Frogger. However, since the maid sprite doesn't match the top-down perspective of the stage, 
vehicles can drive right through you. It turns out that your position is based on where your feet are. In the second minigame, you have to move a trampoline and make sure a maid doesn't fall to her death as she tries to grab more balloons. And then the third minigame has you on the beach as you try to hit the birds with the balloons while avoiding their poop. That one. If you die, you'll be treated with this FMV. Gotcha. Meanwhile, if you die in the circus level, you'll get this game over scene. Come in. We're sorry we kept dropping you. The trampoline was much harder to move than we thought it would be. But we brought you George and a game. Ah. It's nice. Aww. You guys are the best. Mm -hmm. The minigames reportedly go on forever until you die, and when the game came out, it was listed in the cruelty, partial nudity, and sexual overtones categories. As you can imagine, the game elicited reactions all across the internet. Is this like what actresses do before they get into porn? God it has to be the beat. Oh, yes! <laughs> this is terrible. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Who came up with this? Immediately, oh, yes. I, I <laughs> notice a distinct feeling of nausea. <laughs> <laughs> the beach, Xbox Live Indie Games. If you weren't idea. around when they were around, you missed out one of the best times. In the credits, the maid actresses can be seen, and it turns out that one of them, Callie Logan, is actually a porn star. Her other aliases are Cassandra Stanton and Joanna Dillon, and she apparently appeared in the June 2003 edition of Playboy's College Girls magazine. According to her porno profile, she is an official MILF who has a bachelor's degree, and while shooting porn, she was a professor at a vocational college. A trailer for Maids with Balloons was posted on the game's YouTube channel, where videos of other women dressed as maids were uploaded. These videos show maids playing with balloons and popping them in an awkward and sexual manner. Mm, I love balloons. <sighs> so who's the tortured artist that made Maids with Balloons, and why? In 2011, a podcast called All Gen Gamers was able to interview the person responsible for the game, Jason Ketterling. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> totally got these girls from strip club. That guy got them. Ketterling explained that the game was a parody of Atari 2600 games like Space Invaders, Freeway, and Circus Atari. At the time, Ketterling only had four months of programming experience but wanted to spoof Atari games, since the marketplace was saturated with Atari game ripoffs. To make Maids with Balloons unique, Caterling decided to include three minigames and tie them together with a May theme for coherence. What inspired him to do this was that at the time, the best-selling games had women on the cover. Fortunately, Caterling happened to be a photographer who worked with attractive women, and so when he asked them if they wanted to be in a video game, they all said yes. I had made one game, Video Poker, um, just basically making it while reading the instructions and like looking through tutorials, I had no idea what I was doing. Then I banged out a second a game that's you know very minor, just some very basic, and I was ready for my third game. I was, it was about four months into programming. Um, at my level of skill, I knew all I could really do next was, you know, something Atari 2600-like, but the indie games marketplace is flooded with just ripoffs of Atari games. Uh, I didn't think we needed another one, and I didn't want to make something that I felt, you know, had 
no reason for existing. If I'm going to spoof, you know, an old Atari game or do something of that line, at the very least, I'll put three of them on the same, you know, in the same game, you know, give, you know, three little multiplayer games and give it some kind of a shell to make them all fit together. Mm -hmm. And there were two other things that factored in. Um, at the time, the top selling games were the games that had a picture of a girl on the cover, not necessarily a hot girl or you know, a, a professional model, but anything with a human female on the cover was selling great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, even if she was animated. Um, and the third and final reason, um, you know, I saw that the, there was other companies putting real girls on their, you know, game covers, um, even a couple of decent ones that used them in the gameplay. Uh, but they were just like, you know, the guy's sister that made the game, or she might be the girl that made the game. I'm a photographer. And I'm constantly working with some of the hottest women you've ever seen. So I'm like, if I could get these girls on a game, that would be awesome. So I started talking to them and everyone loved the idea. Every girl I work with wants to be in a game now. Oh, man. <laughs> Development of the game took five weekends to complete. And financially, Caterling said at the time that he was just $20 shy of breaking even. However, he said that he could have earned thousands of dollars more if Microsoft hadn't changed their policy. Before, a game could be in the top downloaded list even if people just downloaded a trial, but Microsoft changed it so that only games that were purchased would appear in the list. Because of that, Maids with Balloons faded into obscurity, but Caterling says that he's happy with the results and that he only made the game for fun and wasn't looking to make money off of it. He's just glad that people played the game and that it received attention. Um, I'm actually quite happy with it. Uh, I do this for fun. Uh, the fact that I you know, made this and people talk about it and people play a game that I made is all I wanted. I wasn't mm -hmm. looking to make money. Around the world, players have encountered strange and unexpected things in their games. Here are some of those encounters. Cherry Pie Come here, boy. Some people like it rough. Hey girl, you having a good time? Harder. I know, I'm special. Turbo mode. <laughs> Celebration. That allows these linebackers to run free, unencumbered, get to the football. <laughs> it's good. And now they take the lead. Stealth Takedown Watch your step New update Building a dream home That's still not enough. <sighs> Shortcut. Enemy movement nearby. Invader activity detected. Intercepted. Titanic. Dazed and confused. All right, time to get to work. Ow. 
Ouch. Ingredient, one large flower. Ready, aim, fire. The FedEx field. Did not beat the play clock. Get it off of me. Okay. 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 Now there's no cover. So what? Okay. I, I wasn't. I wasn't ready. I was. Oh. Whoa. Let me show you how it's done. All right. All right. All right. Whoa. Oh my God. Okay, I this I'm sandwiched. Christ. What the heck? What it is to die. Oh my God! <laughs> Three of them. And let me teach you what it really means to die. If I survive this. Oh my God! Four. 